And hello, and here's the uh, latest update on Nibiru. What we have here is an article by the Australian ABC, which is uh, our version of the BBC in England. And what they're talking about here is that Australian astronomers are launching a public search of the southern skies for the elusive Planet Nine. And as we already know, the system, uh, whatever you want to call it, they call it Planet Nine, but we know it's Nibiru. And the reason why they do that is because if you type in Nibiru, you find out all of the information. And if you type in Planet Nine, you just get their version of the information. So what they're doing is they're inviting the public to access uh, this online image capturing program that they've got. And they're asking people to look at uh, like three different images where you put one in front of the other and you look if there's a, a blip, you know. Uh, it, it's what they do with finding planets around stars and things like that. So the idea is, you know, planets move through the, through the system and if they take a picture uh, today, then tomorrow it'll be in a different position. And that's what they're asking people to do, to, to manually look at these pictures and compare them to see if any of the objects on the screen are moving. And believe me, this is a massive um, needle in a haystack. And that's why I think they're asking uh, the public to get involved because they just don't have the resources or the tech to basically do this automatically. Um, but it's also part of, look, let's face it, they know that Nibiru is out there, but this is getting the people involved, right? This is drip feeding the people. And if someone out there in the public finds this thing, it suddenly becomes a sensational story that's um, given a softer uh, type of uh, approach because now it's all about, oh, look, here's Mary Jane. She found this planet. She's going to name it Hot Dog or something stupid. Um, and, th and then so the whole story becomes about the person that found it and the silly name that they give it. Not that this thing's gonna come in and cause the earth to flip upside down, right? They're not gonna mention that. So they're trying to soften the blow. That's what this is all about. What's interesting too, is when you come down to this uh, diagram, it's very, very similar to the diagram that the ancients drew that you'll see in uh, Zachariah Sitchin's books, um, like the 12th planet. Yeah, it's very similar. And what's interesting is the ancients drew that over 5,000 years ago. So they certainly knew something. Uh, so this is open to the public, meaning all anywhere in the world. So if you want to get involved and want to try and track down Nibiru, well, here's your opportunity. Uh, it's open to anyone. So, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people are always asking, where is Nibiru? When's it coming? Well, here's your chance to get involved and find out for yourself. Who knows, if you find it first, you possibly get to name it. I mean, I personally would name it Nibiru. Uh, but I don't think that would go down very well. And just the next thing is, so this story then got picked up by an Australian television program called The Project. I think this is a nightly, Monday to Friday, uh, like semi-current affairs type of show. It's about as hardcore left as you can get, or liberal as Americans would call it. This is like Australia's version of CNN. You know, they love Hillary Clinton, they hate Donald Trump. The, uh, the, the host... Um, Walid Sahid or whatever his name is, uh, he was recently in a public stoush with uh, uh, Gavin McGuinness that called him out on all these lefty sort of lies that they tell. Anyway, so for these guys to come forward and talk about it, I was shocked, you know. Um, but of course, what they did is they they put the the, the funny, cool spin on it. This show is watched mainly by millennials. Um, not too many older people watch it. But what, again, shocked me was the... Well, not shocked me, but, you know, I thought typical. In the comments section on the Facebook feed, you've got all the women, not all of them, but the majority of the women are just making comments about, oh, how cute and hot this uh, astronomer guy is. And and all the guys are having this contest who can come up with the most ridiculous, idiotic, childish name for the planet. 
you see so these people's brains work differently to me and you now um that's a fact i'll be discussing that in the new book i'm working on at the moment actually um but i don't want to get sidetracked anyway look i'll run this um uh this the video and you can listen in and, and watch this for yourself you'll also get information how you can find out about how to access these images where you can track nibiru yourself um and i'll just leave it at that see you later thank you stargazing super nerds have the chance to name their own planet but there's a catch they have to find the mysterious planet nine first likely to be on the outer edges of the solar system it's never actually been seen but it's believed to be about 10 times the mass of earth astronomers reckon their best chance to find it is to get the public to help and joining us as part of his campaign to secure the name planet duff is professor alan duffy um alan like first things first does this planet definitely exist or are we looking for something that might exist we're definitely still in the might category here this is we have indications from the orbits of some of the most distant objects in our solar system that there's there's potentially something big perhaps 10 times the size of earth that's beginning to tug pull them in their orbits. But how does it work, Alan? Do we go home and, and grab our telescopes and have a look? No, this, this one might be a bit of a challenge, although it could almost be bright enough to see with a, a backyard telescope. Instead, we have the one and a half meter sky mapper telescope here in Australia. It's been surveying the night sky. It's about 100,000 images. And that's critical. We basically need the general public to get on board online to Zooniverse and on that website, they'll be able to search through those images. And really what we're asking them to do is uh, a, a game of, a cosmic game of spot the difference. We have three images at, set at different times. And if there's an object in our solar system, it will move slightly between. Hopefully, the more distant objects like stars won't. And that's how we'll be able to tell the difference. So we're doing their work for them. Like, do we get a cut? There is an incentive. You do have the potential to uh, suggest a name for this, this uh, ninth planet if you discover it. But I will just point out, we have, of course, uh, Planety McPlanet Face. That's already a no. Um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and this has all got to be confirmed by the International Astronomical Union. So they do have some names that they won't allow, like your own. Um, but they're usually pretty accepting of suggestions. Well, can we call it, it left-hand wristy, Alan, by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you haven't been watching the show in the green room, Alan. Uh, we are trying to uh, get left hand wristy into the cricket vernacular. Not we. You. Oh. Well, I mean, not oh. me. Yes. To replace, I see. The, to replace the term yeah. Chinaman, Alan. There's method to their madness. Yeah, this is a noble right. pursuit, Alan. No, no, it's, it's as absolutely of astronomical consequence. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, good luck with that. I'll, I'll certainly try to support that, yeah. Right. Alan, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Alan.